Okay, I'll try and run quickly through the legal framework. And then in our next session, um, we will go into the committees a bit more detail. And then you can, you, you can bring even more questions and stuff and we'll, maybe we'll have some scenarios. Okay. So on the legal side, um, like I said, you are a Schedule 3A. This is uh, um, done by the three, the, the, the PFMA. I always call it PFMA. <laughs> yeah. uh, so National Treasury introduced supply chain uh, to all the organs of state, basically. Um, you can go to the next slide, it's fine. So basically everything starts from the Constitution of South Africa. So paragraph 217 of the Constitution of South Africa um, is basically the one that talks to procurement in public sector. Um, I'm sure you guys can quote this by heart, paragraph 217 of the constitution where it says when organized state in the national, provincial, local sphere of government, any other institution, da, 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 okay. I, was trying, I was hoping to quote it. Let me quote it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see we, we paraphrased it there. So I, I want to quote it. Um, when an organ of state in the national, provincial, or local sphere of government, or any other institutional identified in the in national legislation contracts for goods and services, it must do so in accordance with a system that is fair, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost effective. So that's why I was saying this. This is where I, I know they say they are, these are the pillars of supply chain. Those uh, things. So they all started. It all started from there. So the whole bidding process and stuff like that. It has been very equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost-effective. So fair to all the bidders, equitability, triple PE, triple PFA, transparent, everything you do, you advertise. You advertise on the tender bulletin, you advertise uh, responding suppliers, you put them on your website, you advertise the successful suppliers on the tender bulletin, and and it must be competitive. Your spec must not be biased, as I mentioned earlier, not biased, um, and blah, blah, blah. And people are evaluated by an evaluation committee. And cost effective, obviously, they've given us um, formulas to calculate the 80, 20, 90, 10 uh, things, check um, the cost effectiveness. Next slide. Yes, uh, subsection one of paragraph uh, 2172 of the Constitution does not prevent organs of state or institutions referred to. Sorry? Sorry? Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Um, so I was saying um, so this subsection does not prevent organs of state and institutions referred to in, in that implementing a policy providing category or preference in that allocation of contracts, the protection and assessment of persons categories of persons disadvantaged by unfair discrimination. So this part obviously was covered by the triple PFA and the triple PBE acts uh, to make sure that black people and previously disadvantaged um, people are covered. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, we, we can read this one, it's fine. We can move on to the next slide. So that was the constitution, uh, then the PFMA. PFMA is what governs, uh, as it's, it's called, Public Finance Management Act. 
So it covers everything that has to do with the finances of government institutions. Um, uh, it was promulgated in 1999. It regulates all financial management in national and provincial government, including entities and pub public entities and public institutions. Uh, in terms of section 76, paragraph 4C of the Act, the National Treasury may make regulations or make instructions applicable to all institutions to which this Act applies concerning the determination of a framework of for an appropriate supply chain management system which is fair, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost effective. You see, we just took that paragraph from the Constitution. It's the one that's, that's why they call it the pillars of supply chain. So it keeps coming back every time you're dealing with public procurement and supply chain, those pillars will keep coming back. Um, so the National Treasury can issue out instructions. Um, so from time to time, National Treasury will send, send out instruction notes, circulars on what should happen. Um, and you are supposed to check those on a regular basis and make sure that you comply. So I hope and trust that you are familiar with the ocpo.treasury.gov.za website. You'll find all the legislation there. So can, can you repeat that? OCPO, uh, O for Orange, C for Charlie, P for Paul, O for Orange. It's like Office of the Chief Procurement Officer, basically. Uh, oh, dot, okay. Yeah, the treasury dot gov dot city. So when you get there, there's a section just for buyers. It's got a lot of information. Like you learn a lot just just there. And so over and above the all the issue, you can find copies of the regulations like the triple PFA regulations. The next one, please. Um, the act also specifically refers to responsibilities of the accounting authority. Like um, if you read the PFMA, you will see it's divided in sections. So there's the first section that talks to government uh, departments. So up to paragraph 48. Um, and it's talking to accounting officers and, and those guys. And then from 49, it's talking to institutions and which is where you come in. So, um, so yeah, I would just I would advise you, it's not a very big act. Like I'm saying, basically they are repetitions. The chapters are basically repetitions. Um, so for you, you can just read it from paragraph 49 and just go down. You will see a lot of very interesting things that are relevant to your specific organization. So um, accounting authority must maintain an appropriate procurement system that is a fair, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost-effective. It will keep coming up. Um, this being in line with the five pillars of procurement, namely value for money, op open and fair, competitive, ethics, fair dealings, equity, and accountability and transparency. Next slide, please. The triple PFA. So triple PFA is the Preferential Procurement Policy Framework Act. It's the one that's such a tongue, tongue, yeah, tank twister. Um, so there's an act, uh, I think it was, it, it was in 2000, promulgated in 2000, the actual act. And then there were regulations that were uh, issued after the act was done. So there was regulations 2001, and then there was regulations 2011, so when the 2011 ones came out, they withdrew the 2001 ones. And then, then there was a 
2017, which as well we drew the um, 20, uh, 11 ones, 2011 ones, yeah. So, for example, with the 2017 one, we changed things like the thresholds for the tender system, the 802010, before 2017. Uh, 8020 was up to a million, right? And then everything above a million would be 9010. So from 2017 regulations, the maximum 1 million threshold was moved to 50 million. So now everything below 50 million would do 8020. Everything above 50 million would do 9010. So there's other uh, things that changed with the 2017 regulation. Yeah, are we still together? Yeah. The one yeah, but, yeah, but sorry, can, can you please repeat that? O, o, o 9010 applies to, applies from which amount to what? 9010, if you look at your SPD6, the new SPD6, I know people make mistakes and use the old one and then it's, 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 it's written there nicely. So uh, paragraph six and seven of the regulation of regulation six and seven, they cover that change. So the 80 increased from a million to 50 million. So a tender, so it's still a tender from yeah. 500,000. So anything above 500,000 you do a tender, right? Yeah. It's still yeah. 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 Anything above 500,000 you do a tender. If it's not going to be over 50 million rand. Yes. It has been evaluated according to the 8020 principle. Oh, all right. If, if it's over 50 million rand, it must be evaluated according to the 9010 principle. Oh, okay. Okay, I so, understand it. So it's important. These things are important at your spec stage. Obviously, when the end user submits the requirement, they must have some sort of budget so you know what kind of thing you are working on. So when you are preparing your documents, you know I'm preparing 80-20 documents or I'm preparing 90-10 documents. And even in your advert on the tender bulletin, it's clear this is an 80-20 project or this is a 90-10 project. And, uh, yes. Uh, so paragraph uh, B, triple FA and and its regulations provide for preferential procurement system which incorporates the 80 uh, uh, point system. So, so all the detail is not on the actual act itself. So if you go Google triple PFA, you'll get a very short document. It, it doesn't go into all those. Then it's the regulation that goes into those details. So the one that we are under now is the 2017 one. Next slide. Um, okay. So the triple F uh, is a formal requirement of accounting authorities to ensure implementation of supply chain processes an integral part of the thing. Um, it's required by accounting to develop, implement, effective, and if I think we went backwards. Next slide, please because this is still PFME, yeah. Um, yeah, so those are the major ones. So the one that you, actually all of them, uh, yeah, all of them you must be familiar with. I know PFMA goes into finance, it defines irregular expenditure, it defines um, a fruitless and wasteful expenditure, it defines um, unauthorized expenditure on such things. So there's sections that are not uh, procurement or supply chain specific in the PFMA, but they are very good uh, information for you too. And then the triple PFA, you must know it uh, word for All right. word. Word for okay. word. All and right. then, <laughs> Uh, there's another one I wanted to touch on. Okay. Um, uh, treasury regulations. 
Are you familiar with? Okay, let me wait for the helicopter to pass. I can't hear myself. <laughs> Are you familiar with the treasury regulations? So paragraph, uh, treasury regulation number 16A covers supply chain. You've seen treasury. So there's, um, I think they are part of the PFMA, or oh, there are regulations that came from the PFMA. So 16A of those regulations uh, covers specifically supply chain. So things like, um, there's a popular one, paragraph 6.4, is it four or three? That re re refers to, to emergency procurement or deviations and things like that there. It's the where, where, where it's impractical for you to, then you can do uh, deviate from process. So that's the paragraph people normally use to avoid process um, or in cases of emergency or agency. So it's because of that paragraph that even under COVID-19, you could procure things without following a tender process because now you could prove that it's an emergency, we need PPE. Now, uh, we'll discuss how that was abused later on. Uh, <laughs> what's the next slide? <laughs> next uh, uh, yeah, before we continue, I don't know if we are still gonna touch on this, but uh, I just want to, uh, a bit of a clarity in it. Under the evaluation process, uh, evaluation criteria, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we'll, we'll find that we have a functionality, mm -hmm. then we'll come to e pricing after a functionality. Mm -hmm. So the point system that are counted under a functionality, say, say we have a threshold of 60%. Yes. Uh, it, if, uh, yeah, if a person pass a functionality, uh, say maybe he got, under functionality, say maybe he got U, 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 A, U8, that means he has passed our, 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 um, our functionality because he got to 80 and our threshold is for 60%. Yes. So that, that 80, when you, do, when you are taking it down now to a pricing, mm. uh, say, say on pricing it got to, um, 100%, say it goes 100%, that the total, the total down there, does it have to be 100 and, 180 or it still has to be, we still have to stick to 100, 100. Okay. I don't know, I don't know if you, if you hear me. I know your question, I understand your question. Um, yes. Um, maybe let me, answer it first and then I go back to what I wanted to say. Uh -oh. Okay. So um, the right answer would be uh, basically the, the functionality evaluation falls away once you are done with it. So oh. <coughs> don't matter okay. anymore. I see thing. Um, they might matter when, when you have equal scores and stuff like that, but <coughs> they are not to be considered in the pricing. Okay, no, I, I'm clear. <laughs> oh, okay, let me not cut you. Yeah, we have your follow up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay let, me, let me go back. You remember my desk <coughs> scenario? Yeah. Now we were at what stage? We were at the stage where the spec committee has done the spec. It's been approved by the BAC then some accounting officer uh, books the the advert they advertise for 21 days <clears throat> and then there's a closing time sorry uh closing time and date and like i mentioned earlier you might have a, an opening committee so that must be documented yes. so at exactly yeah. that time guys it's very important. exactly that time time you close the the tender. Yeah. Um, you do not take anything uh, after that time. So different institutions use different uh, processes. Some 
they have a stamping thing as people submit their tenders, they write exactly what time they submitted the tender or maybe write at the security desk, you have a, a, a register there that people, but, <clears throat> but after the time you don't accept anything. Then you open yeah. the thing from the DEC, then you advertise who has responded. You haven't even started the uh, responded then the PEC starts the process so first step of evaluation they do the I'm trying to look for the right word the the, the minimum the, it's not it's not functionality per se but there are things that you would have listed in your bid document and spec and everything as you must have you must submit this you must submit that you must be this you must do you understand? Yes, yes. Are you on CS? I text things. We haven't even looked at what you're offering. Do you have a yes. test? Valid, you are on CST, you are then we can consider you. So that's step one. Then everyone who falls off they are, they are gone, they are done, they are finished. Okay, even before we get Company B comes at five past eleven. They want to tender at five past eleven, or for some strange reason, or let's say you are following the, the system. So as they sign that, you can see that it was signed in at half past eleven, ten past eleven, and the closing was eleven. That bid, you don't even accept it. You don't take it. You send it back as it is. Yeah. So that supplier, you don't even look at their details and like, yeah, maybe they are offering the best looking input. Yes, what we, you don't even get there. <laughs> yeah, all right. Second one, you look at the minimum requirements. They must uh, whatever this, that, that, that. In my furniture scenario, it even gets even more interesting because there's local content uh, issues involved. These are the things that you should also have taken consideration when you are doing the spec, the local content issues. Say this is yes. SPD has local content, this is what's required, then they return the necessary SPD6 uh, uh, that they needed to do and those annex charges and all that. Then so anyone who's eliminated that they are out, they are gone, you don't go further with that. Then you start the evaluation. Oh. When you start opening the evaluation, then you, you now you are evaluating them on the technicality on are they able to do the work. So your functionality criteria would normally have listed certain things to say you must do one, two, three, four, five, six. Then that's where you do the the scoring. So then you score people and then someone gets 80, someone gets 50, someone gets 40. So, uh, and then anyone below that cutoff, they are, elim uh, they are eliminated. So, so it, it's good, good as you're going through the steps, you are literal, you are eliminating them literally. Some projects will take you the whole week to evaluate. The ones that you evaluated, eliminated, leave them, don't even bring them to that room. Yeah? All right. <laughs> <laughs> then you go to the next step. Then you like you understand you you might have a two two envelope system. So obviously, you had the first envelope that was just uh, you, you don't even know what they are costing, what they are charging, and whatever. Yeah. And when you're doing your pricing, that's when you open the second envelope. Then you start comparing the two one price. Then there, you're using purely the eighty twenty formula. And then people will be scored out of the hundred. Then the, the recommended supplier will be the one that scores the highest there. You write your recommendation, you move on. You don't try to be creative at that stage to say, but company D that we eliminated at functionality uh, was interesting. Their price was smaller. Hey, you've eliminated. <laughs> so, so you are now at this stage, yeah. Um, it's a very important question. People were, have been making that mistake. Um, we've had cases where even before 20, people would make them, would basically take the whole 80, 20, 
and split it. So they will take the 80 and split it and, and say, for price, I'm going to make it 50. And then the other 30, I'll make it functionality. And then the 20 will be B, which yeah. is, and then they will rework the <laughs> formula to say now it's an 80, it's a 50 something formula. It's no longer an 80, 20. Then, then the, the weight for the functionality influences the final score of the of the beta, but that's not how we do it. So the functionality, you do it and get it done and over with. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Nkosi. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask. I understand with tenders, it's mandatory to have a late submission register. Does that apply with the RFQs? <laughs> I would say yes. it's mandatory. Or... Oh, okay, it's a it's a good practice. Look, um, okay. the problem there you have to learn in in this is just an experience. If the thing you have to learn in 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 our field is that the suppliers talk to each other, so. You'll do something when out of you thinking, hey, I'm being nice and what what. He will go and tell the other one that me, I submitted five days after the closing date. They still consider uh. me. And you understand? And they will and when you are doing it, when you are thinking ah, there's no way they will talk, or do you understand? <laughs> so then yeah. you want it to be fair, to be transparent, equitable. You understand? Those things always come back. It's fair, it's transparent. So uh, when you put the closing date on the RFQ, it was for a reason. And now, if you are extending it for any reason, you must communicate it so that it's fair to everyone who's responding. Because now I, like, I could have issued an RFQ and then people respond. After they've responded, I can call my friend and say, yeah, I have five codes here for a million rents. Send me one for 900 and this thing is yours. Mm. And these are the details, cut here, cut here, cut here. Do you understand? Now already that fair, fairness and competitiveness has been compromised. All right. So, uh, set your times, stick to them. You have to be very strict in, in procurement. It's, it's sad, but you have to be very strict. Like you will make uh, a lot of enemies mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in the process. You are um, protecting yourself as well and the institution as well. Uh, you remember even when we we're discussing regular expenditure, mm. and it's very popular this regular expenditure in the news these days. Um, when they're talking about municipalities, AG is always responding, reporting big numbers of irregular expenditure in municipalities. In, it's still like so. When they are doing uh, an evaluation, or, uh, not an evaluation, an audit, they check all the steps. They check in your file who responded. Was there a spec? Was it approved? Who responded? Did, did they respond on time? All those things. If one of those things, there's an irregularity somewhere in that process. That turned up and you've awarded it already. It might be deemed irregular. So, and you understand tenders can be a lot of money. So it can be a hundred million. It could be a furniture contract that you were doing for three years or whatever, a hundred million. Now that's irregular and it's on your head. Because now then you go to it must be condoned because like sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean the work was not done. It doesn't mean the work was not uh, cost effective. Yeah. Could be done. It could be adding value to the company and all, all that. All that consideration will only be done at the condonation request stage, not at the deciding whether it's irregular or not. You understand? Mm. So, it will still be yeah. irregular expenditure register 
but it will be marked, okay, this one, it still benefited the company and, and, and so it's condoned, but it will still be irregular. And the investigation and, and disciplinary action and all that that must be taken against the official must still continue. <laughs> you understand? So, yeah, I know, I understand. So all those things. so it's very important guys you, you stick to the laws you read these things you just read, you don't have to yeah you can read them just casually just read the paragraph if you if you you read one paragraph the next day <laughs> take it. it's it it will help you and it covers you on on to make sure you know this thing. all right all right uh, I I want you to to tell me when I'm blabbering. <laughs> I, know. I know we are still still doing fine. We are still when good. Going, when I'm going too far. <laughs> uh, what's the next uh, slide? I'm not sure if the it's finished. Yeah. Uh, framework. <laughs>